begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the show. It's Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem, baby. We got some good news out there. But first, I want to say, I love this country. God bless America. Come on, everybody say, God bless America. You got to love this great country. A lot of patriots died for it. I don't care if other people out there say this ain't the greatest country in the world. I call BS. America is the greatest country that this uh, world has ever seen in the history of mankind. Now, the reason I come off and say that stuff is because right now, America is going through a little issue. Little issue. And this was actually brought to my attention uh, by a subscriber who on the comment section said, How can America dictate to other countries when it cannot even handle its own cities with these riots? And I had to explain, unlike a lot of other countries, this country, the good old USA, has a constitution. The reason why the feds cannot go into a state is because there's separation of powers. A state has to request federal assistance. That does not mean we're weak and we cannot handle stuff and we're not supposed to be starting wars and being involved in them. And of course, you know what? Something I agree with. America shouldn't have to bail your asses out. I think a lot of Americans are getting tired of bailing other countries out of BS. We're tired of our tax dollars going to you guys and all we get back is crap. So here's what I say. NATO, you got Germany buddying up the Russia. Well, why do we have to pay your stuff, man? Why does our men and women have to go spill blood for you people? You don't like us anyway. We don't need to pay for your security. You guys have got enough money over there in Europe. And I'm not trying to bash Europe, but, you know, uh, something in the biker news has got me going on this. Because when somebody says, hey, America, why don't you do this and that? Well, it all comes down to a constitution. We do not live under socialism. We do not live under far, well, (laughs) if we don't vote the right way, uh, under far leftist extremist uh, ideology where a person doesn't have true freedom. And this goes to a lot of countries in Europe, for Christ's sakes. In England, it's hard to get a gun. Here in the United States, we love our guns. The shot that was heard at Lexington was made by a gun, not a knife. I know, uh, you know, there's been a lot more stabbing stuff in London, but hey, that's another subject because you got to, you know, that's the ideology that you guys want to pursue. Us Americans, we're freedom loving people, baby. Freedom loving. Yes, we got our quirks. But that is the answer to that question. Our president cannot go in to say Seattle and crush the freaking riots. That is up to the local officials. And they ain't worth the crap. They actually had the mayor move out of his own house. Can you believe that? Because he is a coward. Coward, I say, baby. As far as our interference out in uh, the Middle East. Yes, we've been there way too long. But you know what? They started it. They flew two airplanes into the World Trade Centers. Attacked the Pentagon. And brought down a third plane. 
they deserved what uh how what was that song a boot in your ass you attack americans it's a boot in the ass but i find it funny find it funny how a european country would have the balls the balls to say anything to the united states when tens of thousands of our boys we're over there to free your asses or you'd all be speaking German right now. If the United States didn't get into that war, it would be Germany as the whole damn continent. But you have the balls to talk crap about Americans. You couldn't even protect your own land without us. I think I'm a little irritated, I am, because you get tired of these elites talking crap about this country. Our boys spilled blood in Normandy and Omaha. On them beaches in Omaha, Utah. They spilled blood at the Battle of the Bulge. They spilled blood in North Africa. And here you have the nerve to stick your nose up to us. If it wasn't for the billions upon billions of dollars during the Cold War, you'd speak Russian right now. So get off your high damn horses, will you, baby? Get off of them. Here's what I say. I say all foreign aid needs to be canceled. And let's see how much shit they talk about the United States at that point. Yes, we want to get... A lot of Americans don't like being uh, the police around the world. That's why these people don't like the current president. They don't like him because he don't want to be there. There's no need. But there's always that underlying... And people say there's no deep state, my ass. They're always wanting to start wars. Because it makes money. Wars equal money. They don't care if thousands of people will die. And this ain't only in the United States. This is a friggin' international deal. International. So, remember what I talk about when I say Constitution. Because you, over in Europe, have a problem. You outright ban stuff that you don't like. Motorcycle clubs, for instance. You, I, what is it, Denmark, I think it is? Actually bans those clubs. Australia. You pass all kinds of draconian laws against motorcycle clubs. Here in the United States, the good old United States, baby. One of the best in the world, or the best, I have to say. You cannot do that because you have a right to associate. Now, they might throw you on some kind of gang list or something, make your life a little hard, but they cannot ban it. That's because of our Bill of Rights. Our Bill of Rights also comes into play for guns. It's called the Second Amendment. Now we know our leftist idiots out there, they want to gun control everything so they to take over. See, they have the ideology of what Germany had during the 40s. Be careful, people. Actually, it was the 30s when they say, hey, you don't need guns, you know, we'll protect you. Yeah, that went real well for them over there in the 30s and the 40s. But that's what our Constitution does. That's why we have three co-equal branches of government. They all check each other. Well, I don't know about that so much now, but yeah, they're always fighting, but at least there's check in some balances, I guess. But we cannot just go into where we want to shut down riots or protests. Protest, you have a right to free speech. You have a right to protest. You do not have the right to riot, though. Regardless of what the mainstream media here in the United States says, you do not have that right. But it's always funny reading the comments from people from other countries because we're worldwide. And 
I personally also learn from the experience because I got to appreciate the freedom I really do have. Now, of course, you know, English will say, well, we're free. Australia, well, we're a free country. We're a democracy. We're a republic. We are not a democracy. Don't even get that screwed up. A lot of people do not realize democracy, a majority rules. In a republic, the minority has its rights protected. They can come to conversation. They can't be overridden. That's a republic. True freedom is what we have in our Constitution Bill of Rights. England, Australia, that's not true freedom. Not true freedom. Denmark, not true freedom. Because you have a, gov a government running rush shot over who pe what people can do, what they can join, what organization that can exist. How do you call that true freedom? How do you call it true freedom when you can't even own a gun? You got to go through hell and back just to own a damn gun, a handgun. And that's even north of the border from us. How did that even happen? I think you're brainwashed. Well, Hollywood, why you say we're brainwashed? Because you truly believe you live in freedom. So the story I'm going to cover that led to this whole monologue has to do with, a, I think it's Switzerland. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. But it's a country out there that I'll get to in the story. It says, we got to start taking away all these people's property. Because then, when people see that these they don't have any property, they don't have any money, they won't want to join something like that. So they're trying to go after the property trick. Now they do try that here in the United States. When you're arrested, they try to you know go after your assets and stuff. But they don't do it pre-arrest. Now what I mean by pre-arrest is they don't try to go out well like in Canada warn people if you're buying this you're supporting a criminal organization now you know I have and you know what I might be wrong but if somebody can find it let me know I do not see cops going out and say don't buy support merchandise for clubs out here in the United States again I might be wrong everybody knows I'll be willing to eat crow if I'm wrong you got to show me the proof, though. We don't do that because our right of association. So, as an American, God bless this country, baby. I got to say that because it's not said enough for what our people did for this country. And you know what? What our patriots done all over the world. You guys can hate Americans all you want. But you sure love us when you need us, don't you? Kind of hypocritical, ain't it? Kind of hypocritical. How about you Americans out there watching the show? We got a lot of them. What do you think about other countries and how they look at us? Do you understand the comments that some people say, hey, well, Americans can't even handle their own business. What makes you think they can handle something else? Well, just in the past couple months, or just past month, there's been two major uh, peace deals brokered in the Middle East. Something that nobody's been able to do since crap at the end of World War. Actually, you morons, if you had your uh, way, you would let it just keep on going and going and going. Because you're afraid to get involved. What about all the genocide that happens down in Africa? You guys are right next door. Where are you at? Hmm. Good question. Good question. And I'd have to even say, to be fair, where's the United States in that? 
Then I come back and say, you know what? We got our forces all over the place trying to protect everybody else. Can't do it all by ourselves. Hey, yup, why don't you get down there and do something? Because you sure the hell ain't doing anything ever, anywhere else. But you can come and complain on a channel like this. You Americans that and this and that. You're nothing but racist, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> What you're getting from the media is all skewed. No, we're not a big racist country. You know, that I know that's what the leftist MSM wants to put out there, but we're not. That's just, you know what, point being, what you guys are seeing, any time I've met a foreign biker, meaning coming from a different country, and I tell them I'm from Chicago, first thing they bring up, the very first thing, Al Capone. That's what they know of Chicago, is Al Capone. Don't know anything else about it, but they sure the hell know Al. That's exactly the type of information you're getting off our newses. Now, it's very interesting how if you don't like America so damn much, I watch your news coverage in a lot of these countries, and it's all about the United States, about what this guy's doing, what that guy's doing. It's like, really? Don't you got your own news? You always got to talk about America. Get with it, man. Do your own damn thing. But asset forfeiture, let's go back to that. That is something that happens when you do a crime, like I said before. They'll try to go after your assets to take you down. But you actually got to be arrested for that to happen. Or you have to be convicted in the court. You have to have your day in court. It can't happen beforehand. Like this story I'm about to read. If it was true freedom... You wouldn't be telling your citizens that, hey, if you buy this and that, you're supporting a criminal organization. My question is, when you're talking criminal organization, I hate when they do it here in the United States. Okay, you got two or three people, got them busted, but you're calling everybody else in that organization criminals when they, one, probably don't even have an arrest record. Two, they go to work, pay their bills, take care of their families, but you're calling them a criminal because of a few. That's why I mentioned on the last episode, maybe the clubs or NCOM and all that should get together and sue the hell out of the DOJ about these gang task lists or these gang designations that they have. Because if you noticed, they do got a little precedent that was just set, and I just was looking at this. That Mongols case in California where they tried to take the patch, the judge did say something about not everybody's a criminal in that organization. It's going up to the Ninth Circuit Court, I agree. Probably get to the state or the Supreme Court eventually. But I'd take something like that and say, hey, you got our club designated as a criminal organization, a street gang. But not everybody in this club had anything to do with the past or had anything to do with this type of crime or that type of crime. Those were only certain individuals. I think it would be a good case and I think it would be something to really shove up their butts. So anyway, that is my monologue. And of course, let me know what you guys think of my monologue, man. Hey, love me, hate me, despise me. Put your comments in the comment section. And I might pick up on them and talk about it in a monologue. But God bless this country. I love America. It is the best. And I think you all should agree. Hmm? right <laughs> okay man let's go to the 
Biker News, shall we? Get your most unbiased and trusted Biker News now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. That I'm going to cover first. And the third one has to do with the pagans, because I, you know what? I've been doing a lot of freaking stories that were talking bad about the pagans in the news. And I was asked, hey, can you find a good one? And I found a good story that they did. But first, let's go out to KSWO.com. And by the way, I know, guys, the banner is missing the A in China now. The re and if you look at Insane Throttle's logo, you'll notice a T's missing. The reason I do that is because I'll be able to spot it right away if somebody's trying to take our logos and stuff. So that's why it's missing, so everybody knows. And you need to stop telling me about it now. Anyway, an Altus Motorcycle Club helping house fire victims. Let's take a listen, shall we? A devastating fire left one Altus family without a home they have lived in for the past eight years. Seven News reporter Dallas Payton. About a month, Jessica Alejandre rushed home after her son called explaining that while putting his motorcycle back together, things went completely wrong. She says it was one of his daily routines, so she was shocked to get the call. By the time he went inside, because he said it just started, just a little spark, so he went inside to grab water, and by the time he came out, everything was just engulfed, I guess it kind of exploded. It took firefighters more than three hours to contain the fire. The house was ruled a total loss, but Alejandre says that was the last thing worried about. To me, I mean, I got there, I, it really didn't matter. While Alejandre searches for another home, a local motorcycle club is stepping up to help. Western Legends will be set up in front of their building on 315 East Ridgecrest Road tomorrow, taking donations. They're all day for uh, waiting for drop off um, furniture. The, uh, the Alejandre says she can't thank them enough for taking the time out of their weekend to make this happen. It's just brought me tears because you, know, you just never know, you know, what your community is capable of doing, you know, because everyday life we never run into never stop to think about it because we're just at home or she says until something happens to your family never realize how good the community is in altus dallas payton seven news that dallas payton man doesn't he sound like a robot come on man i thought you had to be better to be on tv than that uh but it is awesome that a motorcycle club got involved in this Hey, you know, you know, according to everybody, clubs ain't uh, good people. But hey, man, they step up when a lot of others will not. They always help their community. And you got to give a uh, heads up to our firefighters out there. Boy, I love our firefighters and paramedics. You are the number one at Insane Throttle Biker News. You guys went in there and it says right here it took them more than three hours to contain the fire. Uh, the house was a total loss, but then firefighters were right there. When people are running out, they run in, baby. Gotta love them. And also want to give a, a tip off to the Western Legends Motorcycle Club. Again, this Saturday, they will be taking donations at 315 East Ridgecrest Road. Make sure you drop off some clothes, furniture, unused furniture, food, and anything for the family that they need. That would be appreciated. Get it shared. Now, I love this one, baby. Uh, Motorcycle Club takes donations for homeless veterans. And those veterans I was talking about earlier, the ones, you know, that fought in Europe, the ones that fight in Afghanistan, the ones that fought in Vietnam. Yeah, those vets. Statesboro came out to help homeless veterans. U.S. Military Veterans Cycle Club in Statesboro held its seventh annual Jesse Homeless Veterans Drive for collecting non-parish 
money and cards for pets in the motorcycle club's vice president are close to veterans. Veterans have made vices. For every homeless vet out there, there's a different story about how they got homeless. And, you know, we're, we're not here to judge them for how they got that way. And we don't really have the, the resources to, to fix the homelessness. But we can feed them and clothe them. We feel like they shouldn't be getting their food from a dumpster. Hell no, they shouldn't be getting their food from a dumpster. This is something our government has to fix. No person who served in the armed forces of this country should ever, ever be on the street. Never, ever. They made this country great. We need to make sure that they live in acceptable conditions, have food in their bellies. Actually, they should get everything free, if you ask me, because that's what they put in. Uh, but anyway, U.S. Military Veterans Motorcycle Club, you're always out there helping our vets. You also served our country honorably. You guys rock and freaking roll, man. Awesome stuff right there. Now, uh, I promised that I'd find a good story. And uh, one it was on the 13th. Uh, the Motorcycle Club does a drive-by drop-off of needed school supplies. And this has to do with the pagans. It takes a village to get students and teachers properly prepared for a new school year. The Pagans Motorcycle Club recently took a weekend ride through the Huntington Southside neighborhood where they dropped off supplies for students and teachers at the uh, Southside Elementary School. Teachers and students alike were there to greet the motorcycle riders, collect the donations, and offer their thanks for the support. Cabell County began the 2020-21 school year on September 8th. So, the Pagans did a, a, a school drive, and I know a lot of other motorcycle clubs out there do the same. Great story right there. Now, the reason for my monologue. Oh, it was New Zealand. Oh, my fault, man. My fault, I hear her is blaming Europe, but hey, it happens, you know. Got my geography wrong. Uh, you know what? I always said on the Hollywood and China Dow show, you know, school wasn't my biggest one. But anyway, it still applies because it's the same deal. You know, nothing changes with the monologue, but it was New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand gang season assets crucial to removing gang appeal, police minister Stuart Nash says. And I was right about Denmark. They are banning stuff. So, again, I ain't going to eat crow on that, guys. So, here's, uh, you know, the gist. They're recruiting prospects in such big numbers that they're doing away with the traditional initiation and instead patching them straight away. Police put the spike in members down to deportees Ouch. returning from Australia and also the gangs now posting slick marketing videos on social media. Mitch McCann has this exclusive Because It Matters report. There's a good chance if your kids are on TikTok, they have seen videos like this one from the mongrel mob to the killer bees. The headhunters too on every platform every day. To some, these videos will seem like meaningless entertainment, but not to others. Documents show the Minister of Police has been advised social media is now an effective gang recruiting tool. They understand also the reach of social media and the way in which that can be used. And so they're using it very effectively. Lavish, luxurious and expensive lives used to entice newer, younger gangsters. A lot of bling, a lot of muscle, wearing stylish clothes, expensive gear, riding expensive motorbikes. Um, you know, they're really trying to, to sell to our youth and young people. The reality is all of that has been born off meth dealing and drug dealing into our communities. <laughs> Really? Hmm. My God here. Uh, the video kind of stopped, but uh, gang busts are crucial to taking away the appeal of membership, says Minister of Police Stuart Nash, arguing that without money and motorbikes, gangs lose their sexiness. 
Well, hey guys. At least they consider you sexy. Uh, speaking to uh, Magic Talks Road to the Election host, Mix McCann. Are you guys covering the United States over there? I know you guys are. Uh, the Napier P MP argued the seizure of assets is critical to preventing gang membership. Following a series of successful raids on the motor or Mongols motorcycle gang in June, Nash said the arrest of leaders and confiscation of cash, property, and vehicles takes away the appeal for impressionable and disadvantaged youth. Quote, well, we've got to make it unattractive for people to join gangs. It's why we've invested so much time and energy in the confiscating assets, be them Harleys or property or cash. You take away the sexiness, baby, of being in a gang. You see these guys riding big Harleys. There's a lot of work. Being done to really harden up on that. To take away their assets, it's no longer sexy and to be a gang member because you don't have the toys that come with it. Uh, nah, I guess Tarleys are toys over there. In June, ammunition, drugs, and cash were seized in a major sting involving more than 100 police staff executing raids at 10 properties across the Bay of Plenty. Bay of Plenty? Well, then, if it's called the Bay of Plenty, why can't they have all the bling-bing? Effectively putting an end to the regional chapter of the Mongols gang, 17 were arrested and on a combined total of 263 charges. It's always funny when they say, effectively putting an end to them. You know what, they're, they're, it's not ended. Uh, the majority of its members have been deported from Australia. Nash noted the New Zealand's rise in membership with almost 30 recognized groups and roughly 7,000 known members on the national gang list is partly to do with local gangs patching up at an unprecedented rate. He says the surge in membership co uh, coincided with the growing number of rival Australian gangs infiltrating New Zealand such as the Magos, Banditos, you guys spelt that wrong, and Comancheros, when door deportees became, uh, began establishing chapters on our shores in 2010. As they have become established, our ethnic games like the Mongrel Mob and Black Power have patched up in a way we haven't seen before. The upward trends in gang membership is also down to the government's efforts to expand the police force. Oh, there it is! At least they admit it, man. They want to expand the police force. New Zealand police has grown by 1,300 officers in a three-year period. There you go. There it all is, baby. Uh, meaning the force is better equipped to crack down on organized crime. Quote, you tend to turn over more rocks and find more creatures underneath them. That is dictatorial thinking right there. We have gang focus units in uh, Taranga in the Eastern District. We're putting one down in Christchurch. We've stepped them up. They are experienced men and women going after gangs. That's why we got a constitution, baby. God bless America. Now, let's go to Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. Former Austin police officer arrested on sexual assault charge and actually i'm going to be covering uh, i seen a very interesting video from black dragon about uh the internet and motorcycle clubs i'm going to talk about that one but let's listen in now charged with sexually assaulting a woman he was supposed to help according to court documents officer walter dodds responded to an attempted suicide call back in april it says he helped a man at the apartment in northeast austin get some medical help investigators say he got the woman's phone number to update her on the man's condition, but then they say he started making inappropriate phone calls. Later that night, they allege Dodds went into the woman's apartment and sexually assaulted her. Court documents claim that DNA found in her bed matched a sample from Officer Dodds. Austin police tell us that Dodds resigned less than two weeks ago. That's before they were able to finish their own administrative investigation into what happened. Ah, nice there. Another rape one. Gotta love that one. This ain't actually a cop, uh, but it's funny. Uh, security guard arrested for pulling all over off-duty Orlando police officer in Castleberry. Cops say, uh, hmm, don't work out too well, does it, when you're playing fake cop? A Castleberry man was arrested almost six months after authorities say he posed as a law enforcement 
uh, to pull over a driver who turned out to be an off-duty Orlando police officer. Officer Zachary Price called Castleberry Police in March after Omar Forday pulled him over on a Red Bug Lake Road and an unmarked white Ford Explorer. Ford Forty asked Price to slow down through his public address system after sounding sirens and turning on white strobe lights displayed on the front of the car. When stopped, Forty told Price again to slow down after Price asked for clarity on whether he was being pulled over, the affidavit said. Ford A uh, uh, pro- uh, appeared to be dressed in a law enforcement uniform with a white patch which read Criminal Task Force. In an interview with Castleberry Police, Ford A said he worked for a private security company called Criminal Task Force and was traveling home from work when he noticed Price swerving and decided to take action. Ford A was charged with false impersonation of a law enforcement official and driving with the suspended license. He was arrested on warrant and has since been released. Now, you know, wait a second here. Wait a second. Time out. Time out. If he was swerving, maybe he was drunk or something. Hey, it was a citizen's duty to stop that. Yes. A man who identified himself as 40's boss with the criminal task force told the Orlando Sentinel Thursday the incident was... He said, she said situation and claimed 40 activated his lights accidentally, but never sounded sirens or used a public address system. He refused to provide his full name. He also said 40 is still an employee of the agency and argued that if the allegations of 40 were true, he would have been arrested at the scene of the incident rather than months later. Very true stuff, man. Very true state of affairs right there. Uh, court records indicate Forty was not represented by an attorney and no contact information for him was listed in the arrest documents. Uh, I totally agree with that story and that, uh, you know, if uh, he was doing something illegal, he would have been arrested right there on the freaking spot not months later. What probably happened was he stopped the freaking uh, cop from freaking driving uh, drunk and stuff. Just my opinion. But I'm going to go into uh, my final thoughts, and I'm going to address that video that BD did. It was actually a very good topic, man. It had to do with, uh, what was it, uh, motorcycle clubs and the Internet. Most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com! Rock on! That's right, baby. Get over to HarleyLiberty.com where you can get your biker news. News that I haven't covered on the this show, but there's a lot over there. Again, HarleyLiberty.com. Also, yeah, you seen it, man. The Hollywood and China Dow show is heating up over on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, all that stuff. Boy, do we have some freaky conversations over there, me and China Dow. So get on over and check it out, people. You hooligans, what are you waiting for? Anyway, God bless the USA. Got to throw that out there again. Uh, You know what? A very interesting video BD did. Check out his station. You'll see what I'm talking about. He talked about... How the internet is the new motorcycle club scene. And you know what? He's right. It really is. And we just seen that story out of New Zealand. And by the way, I stand corrected. It wasn't Europe, but I still stand behind my beliefs out of the, you know, not being a free countries and all that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, But they actually use it as recruiting tools. Recruiting tools. And if you think about it, it, it's kind of (laughs) smart. You know, as long as you're not selling patches online, you're not selling this or that, but you're just using it as a way to get people to approach you. Hey, it's good PR, man. Uh, Recruitment's down for motorcycle clubs, so they use the internet, and them videos really do entice young kids to get involved in the scene. You know, regardless of what Leo says, it's not all about gangs and stuff, you know. Uh, It's the few bad apples, as I always say. 
Uh, but anyway, he is very right on that. And, you know, I agree that the Internet, Facebook, social media and all that is a good outlet where you can get a lot of good writing people man uh like over the weekend hey we had greg come out from uh where he is and he came out riding with us had a good time uh which is awesome greg that you came out to uh, meet us and all that but you get to meet a lot of cool people that ride motorcycles so i believe in that you know social media and that outlet uh people ask me about rc's recruiting on the internet uh, it's an RC, it's a riding club, you know, it's not like it's an MC or something. Uh, so, you know, I really don't think anything's wrong with that. I'll probably get people come back and say, blah, 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 blah. It always happens. I always got them haters, man. Uh, that's like, uh, before the show even airs, we got a hater, man. And it's like, really, dude? Uh, okay, you hate me every single video. Do you really think that hurts my feelings or something? Do you really think that, you know, it really makes me sad where I, you know, I go into a corner, shrivel up or something? Uh, if you hate me so much, then tell me. Let's have a discussion for the hater that's always pushing the dislike button. It's like you're a coward. That is one thing that BD talked about was all the troublemakers in the scene. See, they can't do it in person. They go and make these stupid sites up where they hide behind it. They do not tell you who the hell they are, even though they don't get it. It's really easy to track them and even track down to the location where they live, but they're so stupid and don't understand that. They think they're smart, but you know what? Technology's a bitch when you can uh, trace somebody down. But anyway, they start all this BS, you know, they're the ones that are famous for talking about this club or that club, and it's funny, most of them were a part of the clubs they were talking shit about, uh, but anyway, that really does hamper the scene, because let's face it, I looked at one of these and I seen one percenters on there, and I was like, dude, if I really exposed who was behind that site, you would feel like such a dumbass. For agreeing with what they had to say or what they're trying to push you would really look like a dumbass following some of these sites and BD he has a lot of haters he has a lot of haters because let's just put it out there plain and simple he's a black man talking about motorcycle club protocol that man has went through hell hell with the platform he's doing from all kinds of people yeah, I catch hell, but he catches hell. You know, he has, he's had his life threatened. He's had this one club said that they were going to come visit him, blah, blah, blah type of stuff. And BD rightly says, you know what? Come on, you know, we all have our firepower. Just because you're wearing a patch, you don't mean I ain't going to shoot you. And that's what a lot of people are waking up to when it comes to this pl uh, patch police stuff. I've talked about it in the past. Is it really freaking worth your freedom going after somebody's patch that you know are nobodies? They already look stupid. So why put yourself in freaking danger? But with social media, I don't believe in selling the patches online or starting chapters up. Hey, maybe you might get, you know, six or seven guys that are interested off of one of your videos or one of your promotions. And they come see you to do the hang around and all that type of stuff. But yeah, you know, that could benefit you, you know, and your club. So we're in that age, man. I think guys that are my age and older, they really don't understand the internet and the power that it has. It's these younger generations that the clubs are curtailing everything to. And that's what... They know. They know the internet. So, great video, BD. Really good damn points, man. I really enjoyed that video today. Again, if you guys haven't seen what I'm talking about, go over and uh, check out BD's channel. Uh, really good information. Really good information. Uh, but anyway, let's go to that story over in New Zealand. Uh, yeah, New Zealand. I, okay, I stand corrected again. I ate crow. I'm telling you, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. 
I blame it on my freaking geography teacher. That's all I have to say about that. But here they are. They're going after assets and all that stuff. Out in Canada, they're telling people not to buy uh, support merchandise. We covered that before. I think it was last week or something. But did you see in the story where they were able to hire 1,300 additional officers? 1,300. That's just like the East Coast in New Jersey. They're getting that gang uh, task force together. They have motive to keep labeling clubs as gangs. It enhances their money budget, people. It's all about the money. 1,300 officers. Even though there was a report that came out on that side of the world that it's not even 0.1% or something of organized crime that happens. But they focus on them all the time. That's how they're getting their money. Did I mention that I'm really happy that we got the Bill of Rights and the Constitution in this country? We get protections against that. All you haters of America. Wish you had it too, didn't you? God bless this country. I can say it over and over again. I know you're going to get tired of it, but hey, it happens. Uh, so, you know, I, even in the United States, when, you know, all said and done, uh, the confiscation and stuff, it's like a business to them. And I don't approve of that. You know, say, hey, you got uh, $10 in uh, fines or something. Then they want to confiscate houses and all that stuff. Well, wait a second. I thought it was 10 G's here. But you want to confiscate two, three hundred thousand dollars? That ain't right. And I think there was a court decision on that 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 was unconstitutional. I'm really gonna look into that because I I can swear that happened. I don't know if it was a federal court or it was a state court on the local level. But if you know what I'm talking about, let me know that. And I also enjoyed doing the three stories about bikers help in the community that one with the fire that was good stuff guys as well as the pagans one and the military one i so don't believe that's never should be living on the streets i don't care do something for them uh but you know i said i'm what i'm trying to do is if the media is talking about clubs in a nasty way, I'm going to try to find a good story that them clubs do. So if you ever see a story that I'm covering that's bad towards clubs, if you can find me an article or something and send it to info at insanethrottlebikernews.com that talks about them doing good, I'll put that on the air. That way I can kind of level everything out if you know what I mean. Uh, but hey, wall of shame, you know, another sexual assault, come on. Uh, but that last one was very interesting, very interesting. He would have been arrested on the scene. And then uh, they're trying to tell uh, everybody that he was posing as a cop. Well, his story seems a little more believable because he would have been arrested right away. I think they were just covering for that cop, man. Uh, the blue wall. You know, I do got Leo that watch us. So if you're out there, I know there's one particular that talks on my videos. And, you know, that's pretty cool. He's got balls coming out of, you know, a platform like this. What do you think of that video? Or what do you think of uh, that story? I'm, I'm sorry to say. But anyway, that is the show today. Everybody say it together. Everybody, one, everybody at the same time. God bless America, baby. God bless this country. God bless the USA. I'll talk to you guys later, man. <laughs> Have a good one. Don't forget Hollywood and China Dow show, man. 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, baby. The show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube
YouTube channel and get motorcycle madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!